Welcome to the How Leaders Think podcast, a show that transforms you by renewing your mind. I am your host, Kenny Lang, and with me today is Benj Miller. Authenticity, breaking the rules, and create creating clarity are at the core of Benj Miller's life and work. In his 18 years of entrepreneurial experience, he has founded 10 businesses and is driven by the desire to assist small businesses in making the greatest possible impact on the community communities they serve. He now dedicates his time to helping other business owners catalyze growth through the system and soul framework and find game-changing breakthroughs in the process. Welcome to the show, Benj. Thanks. I'm excited. I'm energized even by the title of the show. Sweet. Yeah. I want it to feel like everybody's drinking a, a bang energy drink just upon hearing it. So hopefully creatine is entering everyone's system right now. CoQ10. I don't know what that is, but it's on the can. So hopefully some chemist can, uh, can email me and let me know what's going on there. But, um, so tell me and our, uh, listener listeners is the hope plural. Um, but what has been on your mind lately? Well, the last few minutes I was thinking about this podcast and the title of, is it, is it what leaders think or how leaders think? How leaders, how think. leaders think. So that, that really got me thinking about what do I think about how leaders think? And it was a fun, like little exercise in my mind, because I do think there are some things that if I think about the leaders who I admire and who have had the greatest impact in my life, what do they, how do they think differently than average Joe out there? And that was, that was a fun exercise for me to, to process through. Interesting. So what, when, whether it's you or, or other growth minded individuals, when they're thinking about how all of these leaders think that they're, they're following on, you know, social media, podcasts, reading the books, you know, there's obviously there's the, the people who have tons of media exposure, like a, like a Gary V. And then there's other people who have regional exposure, but you usually have several leaders that you're following. If you're trying to grow, as you were thinking through that exercise, wh what do you think is the, is the prevailing wisdom or, or the common way people are thinking about leaders as they're looking up to them or trying to model their own success after what they're seeing others do? Well, I think the danger is that the spotlight goes to the charismatic and the charismatic um, have a lot to say, but it's not necessarily the most profound. And so what we do is we hear these, these sound bites and we take them and they become the foremost thought in our mind. And all we're doing is conforming to the thoughts of other leaders that are out there instead of thinking about how we think and becoming a leader ourselves. So even if we're leaving, leading an organization, if we're too busy listening to cultural societal influences, then we miss the opportunity to actually change the game. That's really interesting. So you think people have, have mimicked too much what the, maybe the loudest voices of our, of our current time are, as opposed to listening and trying to find their own. Yeah. And I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. Um, I'll give you an example. You threw out Gary V and, and I have referenced Gary V a lot of times when he said probably a decade ago that every company needs to learn how to become a, a media company. And mm -hmm. he, he was, he, he was not wrong, but he also right. wasn't right. Um, a lot of my mm -hmm. clients are very, very large, very successful, and they wouldn't know the first thing about putting out a piece of media. Well, they're in an industry that doesn't need that. So not every company needs to become a media company something more true that I'm experiencing and, and wondering if, if there is a shift coming like media was 10 years ago. I think right now, every company needs to become a, a talent management company. How do we recruit mm -hmm. and uh, retain top talent? Because that, that is going to be the differentiator in the next decade. I can definitely see that. And, and obviously as someone who's 
a, a system and soul coach and, and connected with you professionally. Um, a lot of our conversations have brought in talent management, acquisition, training, development. But why, how does that thought about what the next decade is going to look like, how does that connect with leaders finding their, their own voice and figuring out how they think, or at least not just trying to be copycats of other people they perceive as more successful than, than yeah. themselves. Well, I think so in, in what I was pondering before we got on here about the title of your podcast, uh, like what are the, what are the attributes, not necessarily what are they thinking, but what are the attributes that were consistent across those leaders that I admire. And I think it's two things. I think that there that leaders live with a sense of possibility. The first one's possibility. And some of that, you know, you add some, some elements of curiosity in that, but the possibility is what can we have tomorrow that we don't have today? And some of that is, you know, how we would typically talk about or think about a vision for our company or the vision of the impact that our organization can have in the future. The second part of that, though, is the possibility that they see in the people that they work with. And so when you see somebody and you see what their potential is above where they see it, your ability to elevate them, speak into them. Uh, to, to create the vision for them that they might not even be able to see themselves. I think when we think about leaders, leaders, um, we, we do change the way we think, which happens in vocabulary. This is an interesting thing. We think in vocabulary. So if we can change our vocabulary, we can change our thinking. If we change our thinking, we can change our outcomes. So the possibility, if we're thinking about possibility, then we're not thinking about the status quo, we're also not thinking about regret, right? So there's a bunch of unwanted baggage that we can get rid of just by being focused on possibility. And so what can we create? What can we do? What, what could be different? What could be better, more impactful tomorrow than it is today? And by tomorrow, I, tomorrow might be 10 years from now. It's hard to make significant impact in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. so, so, but their tomorrow isn't necessarily a, a timeline. It is in the future, in the tomorrow, we can do something different and you can be something different and I can be something different. So it's a, it's a world full of possibility uh, that they see and they bring out the best in the other people. The second thing that I, I landed on was gratitude. Hmm. Um, th there are very few leaders that walk around bitter those, those tend to be not people that we want to follow. Um, and I don't know if there's correlation or causation in there, but when we think about leaders, we think about this interesting mix of both possibility for what could be and gratitude for what is. So Dan hmm. Sullivan, Dr. Benjamin Hardy wrote the book, the gap in the gain, right? And we could talk about yeah. the gap between where I am and where I wish I was, or we can talk about the gain between where I am and where I was yesterday or a year ago. And I think that if we live in the gain, then we're living in the gratitude. So it's not about the gap of possibility. You know, the gap is, mm -hmm. uh, is, um, just an opportunity for the future to fill that possibility. Right. So, mm -hmm. but we want to internally emotionally live with the gratitude. So if, when I think about how leaders think, I think I landed on those two things, possibility and gratitude and the interesting combination of the two of those, because it's really easy to live with a world of possibility and be frustrated that it's not here today. Gotcha. Would you say it's also possible to have so much gratitude for how far you've come or where you are today or the present moment that you've sort of ceased dreaming to yes, progress beyond absolutely. where you're at? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's a very interesting combination of, of those two mm -hmm. elements. So if, and I would agree the, about the, you know, if you got a, a grumpy, ungrateful person that, that, most often they're probably not in a, in a high leadership position, you know, maybe through sheer, sheer force of like skill or something like that. They've, they've risen to some rank, but maybe not as, as high as they could be. What, 
it, what is the thinking of the the people who aren't um you know ha- experiencing that gratitude experiencing possibility um specifically if they're already in some sort of leadership position right cuz there are there are a lot of people middle lower management or something like that or maybe very small business, you know, because the average small business has less than four or five employees. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can still get away with being a grumpy Gus. But how are they thinking and how does that that thinking change how they are leading those people? Because if I if if I look on somebody and I see possibility in them, I'm going to lead them very differently than if I don't, I guess, what what is the absence of possibility? Because it can't just it could be nothing, but it could be something else, maybe more self-centered or where's that person's mind? Interesting. Um, so I think, first of all, to clarify, when I when I talk about leaders, my definition tends to be somebody that I would follow. So okay. it's not necessarily a rank or a position within the organization. It's just like, hey, if we're talking about good leaders, let's talk about people that we'd be okay following, right? And that's a different okay. bar. Um, so that's a good question. If you're living without possibility, um, I think, I don't, I don't know if this is where your mind is, but what I see um, in our society right now is that we, uh, the enemy is fear. And we are constantly at battle with fear and anxiety um, because there is, there is, the other side of possibility is what if this, what if that you can, you can say what if and raise your voice, or you can say what if and lower your voice. Right. And they're two different what ifs yeah. and we can either be scared to death and play out of fear, or we can be super curious and play out of wonder. Gotcha. What, what do you say to the person who maybe they've been experiencing that fear? There's been a lot of, um, I'm not even going to say necessarily cause, but there's been a lot of opportunity over our last two to three years to lead and live out of fear. Um, that person acknowledges that. What what do you tell that person that says, no, 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 I'm I I am just mitigating risk. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm being I am the careful mm-hmm. leader. And certainly we don't want careless, thoughtless, reckless leaders, yep. um, you know, because that's another ditch to fall into. But what do you say to the person that they're living out of fear? Maybe they're not entrenched, but they don't know how to step out of that because it feels like, well, it's gotten me this far. This has kept me and my people safe. And so I've capped the downside, but at the same time, they've significantly capped their upside. What do you say to that leader? Well, I think that if they're being that strategic with it, that we're in a mm-hmm. mode right now where it's more about limiting the the uh, the risk than it is about raising the ceiling. There mm-hmm. there are appropriate seasons for that. If we're talking about as a demeanor, as a human, they live mm-hmm. in that kind of fear reactive. There's always going to be COVID. There's always going to be a recession. There's always going to be something that can drive us. And so how do we become, you know, you and I, we, we use the language inwardly sound from our model. How can we be so inwardly sound that even when all these things are happening, we can move forward on solid ground so that we know not necessarily what the future brings, but we're mm-hmm. not acting out of fear. You know, how do we go on the offensive? You know, there, uh, I was in a, a session with a client last week. And the CEO called out the room because they were, they were entering a little bit of this fear space about the, you know, upcoming recession, the markets, blah, blah, blah. And he said, look, guys, I heard this analogy from racing. They said, it's really hard to pass a car in the rain, in the sun, but it's really easy to pass 10 in the rain. And so the, when the world gets scared, it also provides a great opportunity for those that get smart and get offensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where you see a lot of that in, in real estate when things turn down and people who are been strategic and flush with cash, they go in and they buy up a lot of real estate, every market levels out and suddenly they're, they're at a new level of wealth. Well, well, yes, um, absolutely. Also, um, you know, there's, there's two types of people that go into real estate. 
and half of them are people who have been successful in business and don't know what to do with their money. So it's, it's where good entrepreneurs go to go out to pasture. Right. And so they're savvy enough to recognize the downturn, um, is as an opportunity. And a lot of that comes out from their entrepreneurial spirit. The, you know, the other half of the, the market in real estate is the people that are there because it's a, it's a fixed asset with less risk. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there are more risk fear-based, you know, prone thinking type. I, I wouldn't, yeah. Savvy investors, maybe visionaries rarely. Gotcha. So in getting back to the, I like the, this intersection of gratitude and possibility. Um, as you've seen that in the leaders that you feel are worth following and, and maybe just even then some reflection of yourself being that, you know, we're coming to the end of the year. A lot of people get reflective. Um, how, how are those things cultivated? Because I, I am inclined to believe that those possibility may be, but I don't know necessarily that gratitude is a natural state for, for most people that those things feel like uh, disciplines to be cultivated in yourself to where they are, you know, second nature, like tying your shoe, or at least you have some safeguards for yourself. I think you answered your own question. It's a muscle, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so I don't accept the people that say, well, I'm not naturally curious. I'm not naturally grateful. I'm like, okay, who is? Right? Like it absolutely takes work to grow the muscle and um, gratitude. You know, there's a million things written out there about gratitude. You know, take a minute before your head hits the pillow and write down three things you're grateful for. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you can do that. on. That's the micro. On the macro, we just did this as an organization this morning. We all together, like we, we talked about what we've created this year as we're coming to the end of 2022. It's like there to, to pause and go, oh my gosh, these 20 things didn't exist at the beginning of the year. And now they do. And here's the mm -hmm. impact from those. Um, that was an, that was super, um, you know, encouraging, energizing conversation but it was a practice. It took time. It took somebody saying, Hey, let's stop and make the list. Let's stop and be grateful. Let's stop and say thank you to each other and the people that made that happen. It's mm -hmm. just intentionality. And the same thing is true with this world of possibility. It, it is the discipline of how we think. And when are we going to take time, uh, oh, turn off all the noise and sit and say, what if, what could we do? What are we trying to do? That, that's a question that most people don't stop. You know, what are we actually trying to do here? As individuals or, or maybe in the business setting, yes. like as a company? Yes. Do you, um, when, a, a, in your years of, of coaching and, and leading different organizations, how, how do you bake that in to say, what are we trying to do? Because I imagine that's very orienting for gratitude and, and possibility um, because then there's some, some finite, whether assets like you and your team were looking at this morning and saying these things didn't exist at the beginning of the year, we created something from nothing. And that's, that's awesome. We celebrate that um, could also just be internal progress that maybe you've made this year, some discipline or practice you wanted to um, produce for yourself. So how, how do people get that orientation around where they are and what they're trying to do. Um, cause that feels very central to those, those two axes of gratitude and possibility. Yeah. Well, I thought about bringing up a third attribute and I decided not to, but you're leading me into it. Uh, you're welcome. And, and that's the attribute of reality. Uh, great mm -hmm. leaders have the ability to call out reality and let the room deal with it. So often we get in rooms and we talk about problems or ideas or what could be better, but nobody's willing to call out the reality. Kenny, you said you were going to do this and you didn't do it. That's why we're here right now. That's the reality of why we're in this situation. And so 
if we call out reality as is, there's no judgment on it. I didn't say that with judgment. Hmm. I'm making something up, obviously, that you did or didn't do. But but that's not <laughs> said with judgment or condemnation. It's just reality. Right. This is this is our collective reality, or this is my reality. You know, if we're just talking about an, as an individual, if you look at your life right now, what is the reality? I have this much debt. I have this, you know, these are my assets. This is, these are my ambitions. How clear can we get about the reality? And once we have reality, then we can lean into both possibility and gratitude. That's excellent. So what, what for, you know, the, the leader that's listening, they're trying to cult, they, they, maybe they want to say, Hey, next year, I'm, I'm really going to work on cultivating these two things within myself. Um, but I could also imagine, and, and maybe this is me just selfishly getting some advice. Cause I think that's what a lot of people start podcasts for so that they can get free, free advice and counseling sessions. Me too. Um, but what, if, if that leader's thinking about their team, because I've also witnessed and, and have felt guilty of this is I've cultivated things in myself. I've gone out and I've listened to podcasts. I've read books. I'm, I'm listening to, to thinkers that are smarter than me further along down, down the, the path. And I'm great at building those things in myself, but not necessarily helping those that I'm planted around and charged with, with leading and, and, you know, maybe in a family sense, loving cultivating it within them. How, if, if say a leader's growing in that, what advice do you give them to cultivate that in their team? Because obviously it's, it has to start with the leader, right? Yeah. Most things yeah. good and bad start there, but they're not always great at turning around and helping those that next group of people, um, direct reports cultivate. Yeah. So I think what's really interesting about both possibility and gratitude is that because it's a muscle we can work, we can actually help other people work the muscle without even knowing that they're working out. So the family around the dinner table saying, Hey, what's one thing you're grateful for today? What's one thing you're thankful for today? Um, you, and, and asking a question that opens the mind to wonder and possibility. If you had 24 hours and had to spend had to spend $50,000, what would you do? You know, like, well, okay, well now you kind of know what their ambition might be or their bucket list or their dreams, right? So helping people get into both of those states of mind, almost self subconsciously, I don't know if it will ever lead to their own transformation on their own, but there are ways that we as leaders can impact people. And I think, you know, if, um, if we think about, uh, leading kind of like farming, we can, we can plant some stuff, we can water some stuff and we can take good care of the soil, but you can't really control what grows. But, mm -hmm. um, if you do that enough as a leader, then at some point in your life, you look back and you see all this fruit that's grown off these trees and you're like, man, that's pretty cool. And I'm not actually sure which time I watered it that grew that or which time I toiled this, this soil, but man, that, that orchard is starting to look really, really nice. So I don't think we can, you know, all those inputs that you mentioned, like the inputs that you take, that's information. Mm -hmm. I think transformation mm -hmm. comes when we start to act it out. Mm -hmm. And so we, if we can almost bypass and hack hijack their brain to help them start acting out these questions. Um, and, and that's the fun thing is they're both, they're both question ba based to unlock them, right? Possibility. What if grateful, you know, what for, like, th what are you thankful for? That's the most simple way to unlock gratitude. And so both of these, we can start to help people transform their thinking, maybe even their vocabulary and therefore their futures. Well, it's almost as if I sent you questions ahead of time because I feel like you just transitioned right in into my last question, which is that what is that first step? Because um, I'm in a complete agreement with you that, you know, information without application doesn't equal transformation. You need 
both. Yeah. Um, if someone wanted to start the ball rolling, let's just say next 24 hours, what's one first step, one easy step they could take to, to start building that in and cultivating gratitude and possibility for themselves and others. Yeah. Well, so the first thing is I'll, I'll, I'll say what you, people need to stop doing because it's really easy to say, well, take a minute and journal the thing, you know, your dreams and your things you're grateful for. So that's like the obvious stuff, which really just takes some intentionality. And if you have half a brain, you can figure out how to do that. You just have to decide that it's important, but what you need to stop doing is equally important. So, um, we, we have become unaware of the thousands and thousands of messages that get into our brain every day from our social feeds, our news feeds. Um, I know people that constantly have a television on in their house. There's just always, there's always input, but the input is based on the attention economy. And to do that, they use fear. So we're constantly feeding fear and FOMO into our own brains. And that's the space that we need to empty in order to open it up to the realm of possibility. So even more so than, you know, what we do intentionally to get to possibility and gratitude, we need to make sure that we're creating the space in our own being to allow those to start to grow. So turning off the noise, turning off the FOMO, the fear, the news, the articles, all of those things so that you can get some space to start to grow the realm of possibility and gratitude. Cause that will never naturally happen if you're inundating yourself with what the world has to say. I completely agree. And th at the risk of answering my own question, I'm about to ask, but we started the conversation talking about how leaders sometimes, especially maybe younger leaders, newer leaders. Um, I think, what was it? Uh, our our uh, friend, Jonathan Reynolds at Titus Talent said the first time most people um, become managers yeah. or have a position of authority is, is probably in their, their early mid thirties. And the first time that they receive training for it is in their early mid forties. Yeah. Um, in order to find their own voice as a leader and not just copy what somebody's doing, but maybe copy more how, how they're thinking sort of the, the thesis of the podcast. Is that maybe one of the most impactful things that that person can do is just shut that off because they can't hear their own voice. Well, that's a very practical element to the idea that we talked about just briefly of becoming inwardly sound. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, we all have lots of voices in our own head and then we get these voices from the world speaking into us and it's a lot to process. And so if we can start to eliminate as many of those voices as possible, then we get to amplify the few that are left. And those are the ones that, uh, are going to lead us to the places we want to go. That's excellent. Well, Benj, thank you so much for coming on. My hope is that uh, we'll have new topics in the new year and you can come back and grace us with your presence and your beard. Um, since I've trimmed mine down, we need the bearded presence. Are but, we on video? Uh, thank you so much. Are we on video? We are we... on video. Well, then it could be the Blue Hoodie Podcast. That Just another hey. name, possibility for you. <laughs> It'll be like a... a David Crowder band for the longest time had dual titles for all of their albums. Oh, really? It's like a collision or three plus four equals seven. So they had a bunch of like dual titles. So maybe that could be the, the, the secret underground title of this podcast and only insiders will know that. That's great. Blue hoodies and so, beards. Blue, I like, that. maybe that's just our said, podcast. Maybe we have our own podcast. There we go. I'm, I'm working on a network, man. I've already, I've already got another one out there. Maybe that's, I'm just going to be the podcast guy. Maybe, maybe I should just ask questions and coach sort of through the majesty of podcasts. Oh man. Asking great questions and coaching are pretty much the same thing. <laughs>
Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and uh, for everybody listening. Um, actually, I, my last question is, Benj, if, if people want um, to know more about how you are thinking about things, um, where should they reach out to you? Where can they find more about you? Where would you point them? Well, Kenny, um, actually, if you really want to know what I'm thinking about, uh, I started a daily, yes, daily, that sounds insane, but daily email yes. newsletter. Um, you can sign up for it, the261.com. But here's the idea. They're super short and all these things are bouncing around in the heads of leaders anyway, or should be. So it's the things that we know we should do or know we should remember. I just organize them one per work day through the calendar year, 261 work days. Um, so you don't have to have them bouncing around in your head and I will send them to you in your inbox. Or at least, uh, the automation will send them cause I doubt you're sitting there clicking. Although every that'd be impressive. One. No, I, every, every single, single one, one you're yes. just, every, every subscriber you gets a personal email from me every day. You heard it here first, folks. Um, it is excellent. I, I like it. I've sent it out to uh, a bunch of friends and clients and, and, and everybody has had some positive things to say. So I encourage you go sign up at the 261 and that's the numbers 261, not like spelled out word style.com and go check it out. Um, Binge is also on LinkedIn and, and posts a lot of great uh, thoughts there that are not just recycled from the 261 like a lot of people would be tempted to do. So good on you for creativity. Until next time, I hope that your thinking has been transformed and we will see you on the next episode. Peace. Peace.